Hello everyone, it's Richard again on a pretty gray day, wishing everybody the very best from all of your friends and associates here at the Royal Caribbean Group. By now, I hope things are settling down for you, your family, and your business. It's been three months, it's hard to imagine, but it's been three months since the pandemic upended all of our lives here in the United States. It's not over yet, but there are very positive signs on the horizon, and I personally can't wait. Today, I'll spend five or six hours on video calls, ugh. Another hour commuting back and forth to the cafeteria, otherwise known as the kitchen, and zero hours getting a haircut. You know, we humans are good at adapting, but I fervently hope that we never get used to this way of living. I miss the human interaction, I miss the camaraderie, and I miss the chance meetings in the hallway. I also see the very real pain this is causing for so many people. People whose lives have been disrupted, people whose children are losing important education, people for whom normal living becomes a struggle, people whose livelihood is at stake. Fortunately, the good news is that progress against this disease is really quite significant. There are noteworthy advances in treatment that I personally believe are deserving of much attention and much admiration. Doctors and hospitals are doing a better job of treating people who have the disease. Many new drugs are undergoing clinical trials as we speak, and we're already seeing the benefit of that. You can clearly see it in the statistics where the fatality rate amongst those with the disease is declining. All of this progress on improved treatment is really crucial in this battle. At the same time, testing is ramping up to over 500,000 tests a day. This will be a crucial tool in the fight against the spread of the virus. Remember, one of the most important and least painful ways to suppress the spread is to identify where the pockets are and to trace and isolate those pockets. Such testing and tracing can suppress the spread without making hermits of the entire population. And lastly, vaccines seem to be making great progress. Never before has so much coordinated focus and so much technology and so much money been applied to solve such a problem. No vaccine in history has had so many great minds working on it, and never before has the progress on a vaccine been so rapid. Several vaccines are already undergoing clinical trials to ensure they're safe and effective, and the optimism is growing. The experts are obviously cautious about drawing conclusions before all the detailed results are in, but the informal vibe from the experts has gotten significantly more positive every day. I dearly wish that the medical establishment would give us more answers and fewer shoulder shrugs. I dearly wish that this virus was better understood and that we were making our trade-offs in a more informed and balanced manner. Many people are suffering in so many ways and we know that includes so many of you, our travel advisor partners. One of the key questions is whether there'll be a second wave and if so, when and how serious it could be. It reminds me of the time that I went fishing for salmon on the Lairdal River in Norway. The guide carefully explained that if the river was too high, the water would move too slowly and the salmon would race up the stream and ignore all of our flies. On the other hand, if the water was too low, the salmon would drop to the bottom of the river and wait for the water to calm down. Either way, they would ignore our lures. So it was very important that the river have exactly the right amount of water if we were going to catch the salmon. Of course, I asked him what was the right level for the river and how could we determine it? He thought for a moment and he said, no one knows, no one knows. So for the next five days, every night, after a long day of fishing and not catching anything, we would pontificate in detail over dinner whether the river was too high or too low. We talked about it as though we had some idea of what we were talking about. By contrast, our guide never seemed to have trouble landing fish regardless of the height of the river. Clearly, the right answer wasn't a theoretical analysis of the height of the river, but a balanced approach based on his experience of getting his boots wet and fishing in that river. That fishing trip reminds me a lot about our various conversations about COVID-19. So 
I can't guess how or when this damn disease will go away, or more relevantly to all of you, when we will restart our operations. I can tell you two things. Firstly, we are working to make sure we are doing it properly and that we're working to do it quickly. On the question of doing it properly, I've been unequivocal that we will raise the bar on all our health and safety protocols. Our industry has long had some of the highest hygiene and health procedures on planet Earth. But in a COVID-19 world, we need to do even better, and we are determined that we will do so. And on the question of doing it fast, we're working as diligently as we know how. Our operations will start small and they will start carefully, but we will start as soon as we and the relevant authorities are satisfied that all the appropriate health processes and procedures are in place. To help with that, we've established a blue ribbon panel made up of some of the most knowledgeable and experienced people in the world. These are leading experts in all the relevant fields, including epidemiology, infectious diseases, public policy and regulation, engineering, and general health safety. They really are the best of the best. We think they will help us with a faster and more comprehensive analysis, and we will be announcing more about this in the near future. We know the uncertainty is frustrating you, just as it's frustrating us. We understand that you have decisions to make every day. Every minute that goes by uh, with so few specifics makes it ever and ever harder to run your business. I am truly sorry about that, but we simply don't know, and we too are awaiting clearer guidance from the authorities. Until we get that guidance, we just can't predict how fast or what shape our healthy return to service will take. However, we are putting this time to good use, and the deliberations by the Blue Ribbon Panel are one example. When we do return to sailing, some changes will be permanent, but many others will likely be temporary. I'm simply not going to predict. But science and society will guide us to those answers. I again refer to our practice of taking away fingernail clippers after 9-11. An overreaction, but we learned and we corrected for it quickly. So again, I counsel all of us to follow the guidance from the authorities. It's better if we all act cooperatively for the common good than each of us does our own thing. That will speed the COVID containment program and help us get back to business more quickly. And work those relationships with your clients. Based on our recent booking activity, many of you are already doing that. We really appreciate that. And that's the best way for all of us to recover. Now, so far, I've talked about the tremendous disruption and the loss caused by the COVID pandemic. But of course, we're also grappling at the same time with another issue that also demands our attention. And that is the fight against racism. The senseless death of George Floyd at the hands of the Minneapolis police has forced us all to confront the harsh reality that our country just hasn't made nearly the progress we thought we had and that we need to have in order to protect the lives and the rights of people of color. It's a time to listen to the experience of our friends and neighbors. It's a time to learn, and it is a time to act. We've started conversations about this topic with our employees at the Royal Caribbean Group, and some of those conversations are difficult. I hope you're having these same kind of conversations in your community as well. We have to have them because we will get past this virus, but getting to a place of real change in the fight against racism will be an even longer and more difficult battle, and we all need each other's help. Now, to the sink, wash those hands. <laughs>